All right, registering the server now. Click confirm. And it didn't work. Confirm again and again and again. How about now? So you want your own home server and you decided on Unraid. Now you need to figure out how to get it installed. To do that, you got to go to unraid.net slash download. Once there, over on the right side, you'll see a big orange box. Whether you're downloading for Mac or PC, select whichever one fits your needs. In this case, Windows for me. Note where it's being saved at. Go ahead and hit save. It's fairly quick, so shouldn't take long. Once it's done, open it up. And now it's in time to insert your flash drive. Once that's up there, go ahead and double click on the downloaded file. If there's any warnings like this, user access controls, just select yes. It's going to ask you which version you want. You want the stable version, the newest version, whatever you want it to be called. In this case, we will just call it, let's say, demo and static or dynamic address. For me, I'm going to select static. And in this spot, you will put in the IP address that you want it to use. Depending on your network, what that's going to be, most people would probably be something in the 192.168.1. whatever range or maybe a 0. whatever, but in my case, I'm a 10.0.0, .0 and let's make this 11. You can do UEFI boot if you'd like. I'm going to leave that selected. The gateway in this case for me is 10.0.0.1. Most likely you are going to be 192.168.0, excuse me, one. .1. And then the DNS server is going to probably be the same number, mine, it's slightly different. It's a dot two. So 192.168.1.1 will most likely be yours. You could always put in Google's addresses or DNS server, which is 8.8.8.8, or there's 9.9.9.9, 1.1.1.1, 8.8.4.4. .4. There's several out there. They're all public ones. I'm going to put in my internal one. So that's that. Select your flash drive here and make sure that you select the right thing. You do not want to overwrite, you know, your main boot drive. So that is correct for me. It's the Samsung Flash 64 gig. I wanted a 32, but they're no longer available, at least not easily findable. Once you've found the correct flash drive and everything is set up for your network, go ahead and click on right. It's going to come up with a warning, say that it's going to delete everything. Go ahead and make sure that it's correct. And if so, hit erase and write. Now it's going to start the download process and start writing all the information to the flash drive. It's not a terribly long process, but it does take a few minutes. So sit back, relax for a minute, get yourself a drink of coffee or tea in this case, and we'll see you when it's done. While we're waiting for this to finish writing to the flash drive, let me just tell you about this flash drive a little bit that I have. You don't want to get a cheap flash drive. You want a high quality one. I did a bit of research, found out that the Samsung Bar Plus was a highly recommended drive. They are pretty robust, x-ray proof, waterproof, all that nice details. Built quite well. They're metal case. So if you're looking for a quality flash drive, that's one that uh, I would recommend. My other Unraid server, I've had that exact drive in there, except for it's the 32 gig version rather. Probably for the last, oh, three years. And the thing's been rock solid. Have not had one issue with it. So I figured I'd go with the same thing. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the 32 gig, so I had to go with the 64. The other thing I wanted to kind of touch back on is the, the IP address. You can choose to go dynamic if you want, the DHCP version. However, it's quite likely that every time you start the server up, the IP address is going to be different. Unless you want to start, you know, searching your network for the device every time, I wouldn't recommend that. That's why I went with the static. Before you choose your static address, you might want to get on there or on your uh, machine there and do a ping across the network to look for the address that you're thinking of using. I would choose something that's out of the range of the DHCP. And if that's getting a little in the weeds, you know, we can talk about that later if you'd like. But uh, to do that, just bring up command prompt, type CMD, you know, click on the start button type CMD, press enter, and then you can ping, and then the address that you're thinking about using. In this case, I was doing 10.0.0.11, press enter, and it's gonna go ping out across the network. And if there is something on that address, it's gonna come back and say that the destination was reached and I'll have the time there. Mine's clear, so that's the address I'm using. All right, well, it is finished up. So now hit close and go ahead and close your windows. Pull the flash drive out, 
and then go stick it in the server of your choice. So here we are at the server. It's been turned on, flash drive is inserted, and looking for the uh, F2 system startup menu here. In your case, maybe inner BIOS or something of that nature. So once that's seen there, go ahead and hit whatever your button is. In my case, it's F2. Wait for it to boot up. And these uh, PowerEdge servers, sometimes it takes a bit to go through all the checking that it has to do to, to get into it. All right, it is in the BIOS settings here. So we are looking for boot devices, boot settings, BIOS mode, all right, and boot sequence. All right, it's going off the drive there, hard drive sequence, this is where we're gonna change it. Internal USB flash drive. I'll move that up to the top. Get out of that and all right, so it's booting up. Once this is finished, we'll go back to the desktop and do the rest from there. This only takes oh about 30 seconds or so, not too long, depending on your, your hardware. And there we go. In the bottom right down here, or excuse me, bottom left, you will have the IP address of your server. So we will take it back to the desktop and do it from there. All right, back at the desktop here, type in that server address that you selected. In this case, it's 10.0.0.11. And there comes up the uh, login page. So the user is going to be root by default. And then you have to create a password. I would recommend something fairly secure here because you don't want just anybody getting into this. So in this case, I'm just going to put in a quick and easy one since it's a demo server. I'm not too concerned about security. All right, hit set password. Once logged in on the right hand side, you're gonna see the let's unleash your hardware window. Got three different options here. Click on start trial, which will give you a free 30 day trial with every feature available. You can purchase a key directly or you can redeem an activation code if you've already purchased one. I have already purchased one, but I'm going to click on start trial and it will grab a quick little license file for you, write it to the flash drive, and then you are on your way. Now this is a new feature within Unraid 6.11, I think is when this came out. So go ahead and click install plugin. It'll quick go out and download the file and get it all set up for you. And once it's done, click done. Simple as that. All right, now in the top right corner, it says trial key and it expires 30 days and four minutes. So once your trial license is installed, go ahead and click on this little hamburger menu up here, top right corner. And then you want to sign in with your Unraid account. Now, this is if you've already purchased the license. If not, then just go ahead and skip this bit. The next window that comes up will want some personal information, name, address, that kind of stuff. Go ahead and fill that out and then click the button at the bottom to submit it. The third step would be to, or to activate the key itself. So there'll be a button there, click on that, and you end up at this screen here. Hit close. And now you've got a licensed server. You can tell mine is named Demo. It's got the OS, uh, the Plus version, Unraid Plus. So I can have 12 different devices. So let's start setting that up. Parity drive. I am going to do one terabyte drive for parity. And then I'm going to do a bunch of one terabyte drives for data. Actually, I think I'm just going to, we'll start with two for now. And the 12 terabyte is going to be for backups for my other Unraid server. So I'm not going to select that now. And this 120 down here, flash drive, or excuse me, the SSD drive is going to be for a cache drive. So we drop down here. And where's that? There it is, start. Click proceed. Now it's gonna go through and allocate the drives to the server and start the whole array up. All right, there you have it. You've got parity drive 
and then you've got two drives here working together so it shows you over here one terabyte one terabyte total size is two terabytes the amount of data used on each drive is listed here how much free space is over here and uh, the little message there saying that the parity drive is the sync has started so it's going to start getting the parity all set down in the bottom left it'll show you the status so the parity sync is at 1.3 percent done depending on your disk size that will take a while so we'll just let that do its thing for now but that's uh, the basics of getting Unraid installed. So there you have it. Unraid is installed, it's up and running, and at this point, it's gonna be ready to use. But we'll get to that in another video.